Hey, welcome back. Now, it's summer, or at least it is here in Australia, so a lot of fruit's coming out now, peaches, pears, apricots, plums, all that kind of stuff. Now, sometimes you've got too much, you get a big glut of some things, and you think, oh, God, you know, how many um, peach pies and things can I make? So the best thing to do is to store some if you've got too much. Now, I'm going to demonstrate what I do with something that I've harvested this morning. These are sugar plums, or um, cherry plums, some people call them. Just, obviously, little tiny plums. Now, what will happen with the tree, because the tree is just loaded with plums at the moment, they're not all ripe, so half, about a third of them are green, a third of them are half ripe, and about a third are ripe. So what I'm going to do over the next, probably about a week, I'm just going to pick the ripe ones and store them, and then when I've got them all at the end, I'm going to make plum jam, which I'll go through with you too. Um, the easiest thing to do too, I've, uh, it's actually quite windy outside today, so I couldn't do any filming because the noise factor, like the, the 10 ways to save water video, you can't even hear me. I'll redo that one too. Um, so I wanted to show you the tree because it's got a net on it. Now the net has obviously stopped a lot of the birds from eating the fruit. There's heaps of fruit on it. But I haven't sprayed it. So it hadn't been sprayed this year. I didn't spray it with an insecticide. So you're going to get some of them that are eaten and just a bit dodgy. That one's a bit dodgy. Like that. You can see the tiny little hole in there. Now these are still alright to use, I think, anyway. You can cut off the little bit that it's eaten through on. Um, do make sure that there's no bugs still in there, so you can just have a quick look, you'll see that there's no worm in there, trim off that bit and away you go. If you're making something like um, a compote or something like that, maybe you don't use them because it doesn't look that good even when it's just cooked down slightly, but for a jam, I'm basically going to cook these, and because every single plum's got a stone in it, which is a palaver, uh, I'm going to sieve it after I've cooked it, or just, yeah, before, no, I'll, I'll actually simmer them off first and then I'll... I'll go through the process when I make it all up. Anyway, back to the, what I was talking about to begin with. Now, the best way to store these, you can freeze a lot of fruits. Some aren't the best frozen, but a lot of really good frozen. Grapes are great frozen just to freeze them and eat through some of them. really quite refreshing. Now, what you can do, things like um, cherries, these plums if you wanted to, uh, raspberries, strawberries come to mind in particular. You don't want to kind of put them all in a bag and just freeze them, otherwise when you try and defrost them you'll just have this big gluggy kind of lump of um, raspberries for example, which is fine if you're making jam, but if you want to eat them individually, the best thing to do is freeze them individually. Now, best thing to do is just use a tray, got a, just a normal baking tray, put your fruit on, sort it all out, make sure there's none on top of each other so it's nice and even. Make sure you've got a good sized tray for the freezer because then you're just going to put that in the freezer. They won't really stick together and each one of them will just be a little tiny, pardon me, a little tiny frozen fruit. And then you can bag them up from there so when you defrost them they'll just separate easy, easy enough. But what I'm going to do, I'm making jam anyway so the whole lot's going to be cooked together so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do, got my freezer bag. Now, like I was saying, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be getting um, batches of these. Uh, hang on. There's no easy way to do this. Um, so each week, I'm just going to get the batch that's ripe on the tree, and then I'm going to do this same process and freeze them all. And then when they're finished, and the season's finished, all the fruit's gone, I'll um, make jam, and I'll go through that too, it's easy enough to make jam, it's just a couple of things to look for when you're actually making it, and most of the time it's just fruit and sugar anyway, and some people add pectin, or um, a setting jam setting agent which you can buy. Alright, so this works with a lot of things, strawberries, raspberries, uh, cherries, um, peaches and nectarines freeze okay, um, they're, I'd rather preserve things like that in a box you know, like the little bottling um, steam pressure cookers that you cook and bottle up and then they keep for ages. You can keep them right up to next season. Alright, so they're in my bag. Make sure all the air's out of it. Give it a twist. And sometimes I just use one of the little clips off the loaf of bread and put that on there. 
and bang that in the freezer. And then I'll do that over the next few weeks and then I'll be able to take it all out and I'll just have all those plums and I'll put together some jam. Any questions about freezing fruit or storing fruit, if you've got a stack, like you've got a tree that's just loaded with something you don't want it to go to waste, just give me a yell. There's heaps of things you can do. Heaps of desserts you can make like with apples and things like that too. And obviously it's not apple season yet, but when they come in, there's different dot pies and desserts and stuff you can make and freeze. Cool, so that's storing fruit. I'll come back in a couple of weeks after I've got the rest of them and um, we'll go through making jam. All right, I'll see you soon.